What's up, everybody? This is Brody, Charlie, and Tudong Dylan from the Talk Talk Punch YouTube channel and podcast, where we talk movies, do lists, rankings, and more, and you are about to listen to the Keeping Up with the Cardassians podcast. Enjoy! Subscribe on YouTube and rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. You have four lights. Actually, Sir Patrick, you rate in stars, not lights, and it would really help us out a lot more if you'd give us five. Yeah. Oh. Four lights! Okay, okay, geez, huh? Keeping up with the Cardassians. That's my voice today. Yikes. I know, it's scary. How's puberty, man? It's great. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians. This is Nick. This is Rob. And this is Joe. And Joe is high on Sharpie. But welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians. We are so glad you are here. We only have the best Sharpies. Sharpie Magnum. Buy your Sharpie today. Welcome to the show where we talk pop culture, so movies, TV shows, video games, music, toys, and a lot more. We talk a lot about a lot of things. Writing utensils. Writing utensils. Yes. Especially writing utensils. Um, and Fago, fireworks, try it today. It's liquid bomb pop. Liquid bomb pop. It's amazing. Uh, but welcome to our show. We are, as you know, we're working our way way through season two of Star Trek The Next Generation. We got two more episodes to review with you today. Up the Long Ladder and Manhunt. So I'm excited about reviewing those two episodes. So excited. (laughs) Uh, It's going to be great. Um, And and you're going to have a really good time listening to it. No, they'll help. We'll make sure they have a good time listening to it. You'll have a good time. You'll have a good time. Actually... Spoiler alert, I would suggest don't watch the episodes, just listen to our show. There was one of the episodes I enjoyed, one I didn't enjoy, actually. Oh, you watched the wrong episodes, I think. Yeah, okay. that, that was season three you watched. You were so 0 for 2 for you today. Uh, you 0 for, 0 for I 2 mean, I'm not one to, I don't want to bury the lead, but these were both bummers of episodes. Okay, well, we'll see. I, one I, more than the other. Okay. So I wouldn't say I like. I liked one more than the other. I wouldn't okay. say I liked one and I disliked okay. one, though. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you and I see you. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so we're going to review those today, but first of all, we want to catch up with some news that's going on, but I want to reference something that I just saw that made my heart flutter a glow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I looked is over there, it, is a selfie of me. No, I looked over at the monitor and Rob has a pulled up on his I monitor. Know, I saw this. The 10 best Battlestar Galactica episodes ranked. He did this without even me. Do you, want to, do you want to know what's even better? What? It's an Onion article, and it's completely blank. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? Why would you do that to me? And so we're going to have to talk about that. I got lists I was pulling you, up today. You brought it up, so that'll be fun. Oh, yeah, lists will be a good, good, uh, good thing to do. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's talk about some things that we haven't talked about in a while. Joe, you were mentioning we haven't talked about the box office in a while. We have not. It's so it is summertime. It is summertime. And this is traditionally when you get your big blockbusters and you yes. get a lot of folks going to the movies yes. and spending money at the movies and exactly. you get your big But not if you're a fall guy. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I, we I don't think anybody expected much from that. Uh, they did. Uh, how? I don't know, they just did. I think they advertised it improperly. I, think I agree. The advertising was bad. I actually read an article about how there was a couple movies that it flopped and they blame them primarily on the advertising, like Mad Max Furiosa bombed at the box office. That was not supposed to because the first one that they did was huge. Yeah. And it was critically acclaimed. And this one was critically acclaimed too, but it bombed. And they said the issue was the way they advertise these movies, you don't know what they're about. You don't understand what's at stake no. here. You don't you don't get it. Right. Where's the, where's the in a world guy? Yeah, I know. We gotta bring him back. I haven't seen a movie trailer with that guy in forever. In a world of stuntmen, and I think, I think we've retired that. Oh. I think we've brought this up on the show before. I I want I would I can't fact check this because I'm not going back and listening to every episode of our show. But yeah. I believe we've talked about this guy before. Yeah, and the and how the fall of movies have has coincided with this guy. Not doing movie trailers anymore. 
Uh, let me look up the In a World movie trailer guy. I'm having major deja vu. I'm pretty sure we've done this exact scenario we have before. In a podcast we have, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13 movie trailers that include the phrase In a World. <laughs> so this this would be a, this is a list. Let's go through this list, okay? Uh, here's the list of movies that use the phrase In a World. Uh, and the guy's name, uh, what is his name? They got his picture here. I think I, he died. He might have died. In a world I where I right. died. The Road Warrior. In a world with gas, there is a land that prays for a hero. All right. Good fellows. I want to see that movie, whatever that is. 1990. In a world that's powered by violence on the streets where the violent have power, a new generation carries on an old tradition. That's like a... That's too mixed. That That's... That's a little too much. Ooh, let's see if you can guess the movies based off the In a World. Oh, good fellows. <laughs> in a world where the sun burns cold and the wind blows colder, a visitor has come, but not by herself. That's what? alien. That's alien three. That'll be, yeah, that'd be a hard okay. one. Alien three or two. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go to Aliens. ones we might know. Oh, Aliens. here's one. Here's a good one. This was a good one. In a world where great risk can bring extraordinary reward, Tom Mullen has succeeded beyond his wildest dreams. Blank check. I was going to say DuckTales. It was actually Ransom. Oh. Give me back my son. <laughs> oh, great. here's a good one for you two. In a world where professional sports has sunk to a new low, Basketball. two guys invented a game that took them to the big time. Yeah. Basketball. Yeah. That's yeah. a great movie. It is a great movie. In a you guys call me bitch 13 or 14 more, more times. times. I'm, I'm out of here. here. In a world fraught with corruption, four young boys unite by fate, torn apart by destiny, somewhere between love and honor, between courage and not courage. Stand by me. Kansas and Utah, there lies South Park. Oh. oh. South Park, bigger love. Yeah. In so a world where freedom is history, brutality is law. Planet of the Apes. Uh, These are very generic. I know. I know. So, oh, here's, here's a good one. In a part of the world where there are no rules, deep in the jungle where nothing that lives is safe, an elite rescue squad is being led by the ultimate warrior. Warrior? Mm -hmm. Predator. Oh. Predator. I think I'm going to retire from them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, so yeah, you're right. I mean. We, I, need, you know, we need that guy's voice in movie trailers again. We there's, need it. There's got to be another guy that can do it. I mean, shoot, Al Beck sounds, has a great voice for something like Al that. Al do it. You should be a trailer voice guy. I think Al does voice. He does a lot of voiceovers. Well, he work. did the voiceovers in our... Mm -hmm. Yeah. He does a lot for Riff. Uh, by the way, his name was Don LaFontaine. Okay. Don LaFontaine. Don, yeah. The family deal. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Bill no. Brown Ford. That's Drew. good. Yeah. Only Bill Brown Ford on that's this show. True. That's who we represent. That's who we... Uh, that's how we rep. We're here. That's how we rep. I got to turn on Do Not Disturb on my phone because Rob is sending text messages. But we were talking about the box office. We mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, and why were we talking about it? Because Inside Out did what? It killed it at the box office. So in its second weekend, it made a hundred million dollars, which is crazy. But its first weekend, in comparison, it made how much did Black Adam make in its first weekend? Like I don't think it crossed, thirty-eight it million never crossed hundred million. No, it? I don't think so. So Inside Out Two is now at three hundred and fifty-five million dollars. Nice, which is incredible. It's almost, uh, if I look at the next four movies combined, it's the same amount. So Bad Boys, Ride or Die, The Bike Riders, The Garfield Movie, and Kingdom of the Planet Oh, I want to see Apes. The Bike Riders. I never even heard of that. It's about movie. a biker. It's basically a biker gang movie. Oh, yes, I did hear about that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. It looks really good. Tom Hardy. They, started, they start off as like a, a, like a decent gang. Yeah. And they become more and more yep. violent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I want to see. Has a guy, uh, the guy who played Elvis. Uh-huh. Mm. Austin Butler. Austin Butler. I want to see that movie. Bad Boys 4 wasn't entertaining. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't just, entertaining? Just, it you, was you entertaining. You get off the Bad Boys 4 hype. No one cares. No uh, one ca we were reviewing the no box cares, office. No one cares, Joe. Dick Watt. No one cares. I know. I'm just kidding. What did it make? 140. Uh, but this weekend it made 18 million. But it's been out four weeks, I think. Has it been out that long? Well, let's find out when Bad Boys. Oh, wow. It feels like four weeks. It came out. <laughs> On oh, what is the date of release? June seventh. Oh, two weeks. Oh gosh. So it only did eighteen this weekend. Yeah, it that's is, that's a drop off. It's June seventh. So this would be its third weekend. Third then. weekend. Yes. Third weekend. So its first weekend it probably made eighty million. The second weekend it made probably fifty million, and now it's down to eighteen million. Wow. Mm. Sucks to be them. 
The Box Office is and struggling. You know, like, what was the but? Did, you know the budget's high for that movie. Oh well, yeah, it's got to be. You have Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence, and so they're, they're going they're all over the world in this movie. You know, Will yeah. Smith's got at least twenty million dollar paycheck for oh, that, right? At uh, least, at least, at least. Yeah, yeah. So you got those two are expensive. Plus, you have the budget, right? A lot of it was filmed, um, practically. A lot of it, like yes, the car yes. chase scenes were yeah. on freeways. I mean, I, I appreciate that. I do too. Yeah, there's a cameo by uh, Michael Bay in it, which I th- I always like that little tribute because he did the first two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would you give that movie? Um, on a, on a one to ten, six or seven. Okay. So, okay. Would you give three? One and two are classics. They're very good. I didn't like two. You didn't like two? No, two ended. They went to Cuba. Miami Cap- cops went to Cuba. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump. It is. I get that, but in the around. height. Of we didn't get along. I don't know if it was the height of it. Uh, no, that's not the height of it. But we didn't get along, and they went to ah, what Cuba. It's the things happen. You the movie ended s- three times. They're like, oh, okay. it's over. Wait, there's more. But it did. Okay, well, True Lies has entered the chat. It, it did. Ha- still, there's Hold still on. alternate endings of True, Bad True Boys Lies. Two did have Gabrielle Union in it. Yes, that's a good point. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I decided against it. <sighs> what we, other box office news is there? Uh, I mean, really nothing right now. I'm try. I was trying to look and see what's coming out. I mean, the next big release that I can think of is Deadpool and Wolverine, right? Yeah, next month. Uh, Can't wait. That'll uh, that'll be huge. That should be. It should huge. be huge. If it's not, the world is wrong. I think that's a good litmus test for what we're doing at the box office right now. Is it? Because I would you would everybody here agree that they've hyped that movie up well? Yes, I, I think they've done a like, great job so far. for it, and then the stars have done well. Yeah, uh, I don't, the, the the movie itself has garnered everybody's attention and desire. It's not a movie that nobody wants made. Right, true. These are it's a property that everybody's wanted more of. So I I think if this doesn't do more the numbers, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, yes, please. Yes. I think if this doesn't do the numbers or greater than we're all expecting, then something's wrong with the box office. Yeah. I'm, something's wrong with the world. So I'm looking mm-hmm. at the box office releases for July. Uh, Despicable Me 4 comes out July 3rd. So that, that, that's a good kids movie. Like, that'll, that'll, be, that'll make money. July 4th weekend. That'll make bank gangbusters. Yeah. Um, you have a, a more of a drama, Fly Me to the Moon, which is about... Uh, the, Frank Sinatra? No, it's uh, Scarlett Johansson, Fly Rainbow me Mama, to Channing the Tatum. Moon. But it's set against NASA's historic moon landing. Scarlett Johansson. Then, fake, fake. Then Twisters comes out on July 19th. That could be fun. I think that could be a lot of fun. That I could see be that. fun. I want to see that in Dolby Atmos. I want to. I kind of want to see the drive-in. Really? Because really? I mean, that's the whole set. That whole setting outside. I hope, I hope it storms. Can the government? Can it, what I, it, if anybody from the government weather control is listening, please make it st- yeah. storm see, at all drive-ins. I think it's well, either one. It's either outside in a in a drive-in or in the atmosphere. Either. I would do. I would like Atmos. I would. I want the Atmos, man. When I saw when I started seeing Atmos movies at uh, Phoenix Floral Park by us, it just blew me away. And it, movies have not been the same since then, especially like a big action tentpole film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Deadpool versus Wolverine comes out July twenty six. So there you go. Uh, so July could be a very good month for movies. Yeah, it's got a nice little schedule there, and they're yeah. all spaced out. So like each movie has its own release. Mm-hmm. Oh. Not stepping on anyone's toes, really. And you got the quiet one coming out, or quiet place coming out on June twenty eighth, which oh, like, quiet place two is it? A quiet place day one, so it's like the prequel, the first day when the when the when everybody can be loud. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Before they could be the last loud day, the last loud day, the best day. So it could be a good five or six weeks for movies. It could. There, well, I, yeah. There's a trailer that came out this week, though. What? Trailer. For the penguin, mm-hmm. the penguin, yes, sir. Yes, that's how sir. you do it. That's how you do a series trailer. Uh, yeah, yeah. That looks fantastic. Immediately connected to what happened in the Batman. Yep, and it and then like it, and then right it split off to its it. to its own thing. Yep, yep, yep. They're gonna do a good it, job with it. I'm excited. It was some nice tension in it. it I think kudo, it that looks looks like it could be good. Yes, I, I expect. I that wish should be a very good series. I think next time something like that comes out, we should do a trailer reaction. Just get on, yeah. But that Zoom. would require us all to be in the same place, or we could just go Zoom. 
Zoom, zoom, zoom. That's outdated. Zoom, zoom, zoom. No, it's, it's was that bad. a Mazda? Yeah, it was. Outdated yet still effective because <laughs> I know the brand. Yeah, yep. that's true. Yep. It worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. Um. Okay. All right. Trailers. <laughs> In a got- world where Batman. In a world flooded Gotham. where Joe was all wet yesterday. In a world where crime has lost its leader, who will rise up from the ashes to take control of Gotham? How many ashes? Gotham was flooded. You can't. Have yeah, who no will ashes. rise up from the floodwaters? Who will rise above the tide? King Shark, <laughs> Cobra Commander. Wait. Ooh. Uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, crossover. Crossover. Crossover world. I'm in. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. We have some viewer feedback. Okay. Um, oh. But I got a, I got a troubling call the other day that I, that, I, that, I, that I need to play for you. So first of all, first of all, um, do we have permission permission to open frequencies? Do we have? Permission? You run the board. Hey, frequency. Okay. Frequencies open. Okay. Thank you. We have permission. Okay. All right. So uh, I got a very troubling call the other day. Here, here you go. Hi, um, I'm looking for Mr. Joe Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins, hi. This is Eileen from Bechtel Slater with the results of the paternity test brought by your OnlyFans. You may want to give us a call back at the office at your earliest convenience. Again, Eileen, extension 5. Thank you. Uh, this is a fake call. Lucy, you got some splaining to <laughs> That's do. That's a fake call. That is a fake call. Do- First of all, it's on Eileen. <laughs> so we know that's a fake call. Spillage happens. Stuff happens, man. Uh there was no phone number. I couldn't call back. Uh I'm I'm well, sure it was left on our voicemail, so there is a phone number. There is, there's a phone number attached. I mean That's a fake phone number. That's gotta be uh, a fake call. It, it can't be real. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the message from her. You might want to give that number a call. Uh yeah. Yeah. No, I don't do any I don't do anything with paternity. Yeah, <laughs> so that's not my department. Uh, but I feel like I know who that was because then we got another voicemail. And this is what they had to say. Okay, so I am in the middle of, well, close to the end of episode 173. And you guys just keep trying to find excuses for Riker's dad. And he sucks. Point blank, gentlemen, sometimes your dad is just a dick. That's it. Were we making He's excuses for him? <laughs> He's not worth Riker's time to drop him in a, essence a military school at 15 after the death of his mother. You know, I mean, please stop trying to make excuses for this man. All right. I am catching up. I'm heading to episode 174. I will be on target by tomorrow. Just <laughs> have a oh sorry cut it off Joe, we cut her off day. yeah yeah she's done but you know the funny thing is she responded she sent another text afterwards that said you guys I was a little too hard on you about Riker's head I didn't think we were making excuses for him if anybody was making excuses I think I know who it was I don't think it was me it wasn't yeah. me yeah not it oh gotta find the good in people yeah you know Mr. He's Sunshine over here everybody's his wife good. his love of his life died that's who tremendous. cares I care. I care about. Uh, nobody him. else does. No. I care. I care. He's got to. You got to move on. Uh, so she she said an apology, but she said she said to you, Joe. She said, Joe, you've already gotten some of the jewels of Star Trek already under your belt, and I feel like you're being kind of hard on these first two seasons of Next Generation. You got to remember, this was a new frontier in 1987, right? I mean, we're still a long way from 87 to 94, and the show comes such a long way through the Cold War into Clinton. It's a massive time of history, and you know, you saw Deep Space Nine first, which is, of course, the gem in the ground, in my opinion. Uh, next one was, I mean, you got to give me some time to get their footing, but man, when they get their footing, it's so good. Just hang in there. I didn't say I was quitting. Also, did she say it was funny? No, no she, she did not say it. Who cares? There's nobody who said no, you were funny this week. everyone's going to say you're funny because you're not funny. You possibly have a child out there, which is not funny, and it's possibly sad. If that um, if that child exists, that child would be hilarious. Yeah, and and, and that you were truly the greatest too, because she also sent us a happy Father's Day card, uh, and it uh-huh. was a great. 
It says Top Dad on it. And, and Top Dad's is kind of a reference to something we did on Patreon. Top, top Pod. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, and that you're amazing. So thank you for your feedback. We really appreciate it. Can um, we read the card out loud, or is it there's too many? It's about your paternity test. Happy Father's Day to my brothers in Trek up north. I just could not pass up this card. Such good episodes lately, Patreon and regular. I am loving all the tea. <laughs> Happy graduation. <laughs> That's a patron. <laughs> yeah, Patreon. If you go to Patreon, you get some good tea. So uh, <laughs> you might want to be there. It's good. It's good. So As low as $2 a month. As low as two dollars, two dollars and five dollars tiers, yep. um, help us fund our Star Trek crews, <laughs> please. At two dollars a month, we'll take it. Yeah, we're, we need every penny we can get. We'll only need eighty six years to fund the crews. Only, we only need two million followers. Oh there. my gosh, we got some work to do. Yeah, we got some work to do. Nah, we're we're good. <laughs> I don't think we are good. <laughs> uh, on the on the YouTube side, yeah. Um, there was a comment from somebody on our on episode one seventy four. Mm-hmm. Uh, said it was the fade in black, the fade back in from the curtain for me with a laughing face. I'm not sure what that one was. I don't know we're, what that we're, is. We're I don't know what that is. I don't know what it, it must be. Something related to the podcast that I just mm-hmm. don't, you know. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up one seventy four. I'll see what I can find, but no promises. And then uh, Brody from um, Talk Talk Punch Brody, said <laughs> Brody Nick not having his. Com- Nick not having his computer and just being on his phone the whole time was hilarious because it looks like he's just bored the whole episode. But I wasn't. I'm like literally looking up some of the things thank we're you, talking thank about. Thank you for pointing that out, Brody. Checking things like thank you, listeners, for pointing that out. Because we've been saying it for years. I am invested heavily into these episodes, sir. <laughs> I am invested heavily. And then he said, uh, "Did Rob just go take a shower?" He left, was gone for a couple minutes, and came back with his hair all wet. And yes, I'm paying that close attention. This is a uh, this isn't well known, but Rob loves his mid show showers. That's true. True. Because when he's in our presence, he gets very hot and sweaty. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a. Uh, uh, frequently, he will take a mid-show shower, so yeah. that was probably one of his traditional mid-show showers. Yes. So does it just go under the table, so he can't see me as well, yeah, or exactly. or he pooped and fell in, <laughs> and that's also possible. Mm-hmm. That's also possible because Bro- their their toilet here is enormous. I don't know if you've seen the size of it. Like you, it's a swimming. Oh, pool. it's a, it's a it is a pool. It is a pool. It's it a, is. Oh yeah, they don't make toilets like that no more. Really? No, they don't, man. Mm-hmm. That, and yet there's still pee on the seat. There is. There is? <laughs> It, well, there no. is now. I just got <laughs> done in there. Uh, Brody also sent a message from the previous week that we didn't talk about. Uh, our one uh, episode 173, which we talked about episodes 14 and 15. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I, I did not mean to say I steam my burgers, Brody. I don't steam my burgers. That was a misspoke. I don't know. You do. I steam hot dogs. I steam hot dogs. That's what I steam. Um, and, he, and then he also said he's not from Detroit, but the building looks cool. I think he's talking about the train station. Train station. Um, and he, and that was his eighteen daddies in just over one minute. That's too much. So he added that. I thought I mentioned that last week, but you mentioned the eighteen daddies, but you didn't mention the yes, rest. Yes, eighteen daddy because so many daddies. No daddies today, though. I promise you. And it's worth it's worth uh, actually, reiterating. Actually, I can't make up that promise. I can't promise no. that with manhunt coming up. No. <laughs> so it's worth reiterating that Cameron said uh, Joe is hilarious. Damn, Joe is hilarious. No, we don't need to talk about that. That's not important. That's neither here nor there. Obviously, Cameron's never listened to the show before. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Th- so thanks for your viewer feedback. All we appreciate it. Seven three four four nine four zero nine eight zero. If you want to leave a voicemail or a text. Some people send us memes, which mm-hmm. this week could be really funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so boy. I'm concerned. Yeah. 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 Uh, what other news do you gentlemen want to talk about? Well, I mean, I have a couple lists up here. If you want to go through your that one show I've never heard of list. Yes. The 10 best Battlestar Galactica episodes. Let's do it. And we might need a How quick are there 10. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to be prepared here just in case we can't remember by the name of the episode which one it is. Are you ready? Number yes. 10, Resurrection Ship, part Resur- one and two. Resurrection Ship was the one where Hilo and uh, what's his name get arrested for killing the guys, right? Yes. I think so. And they get ready to go to war with uh, the Pegasus. Yep. I, did, I thought that was pretty good. That was it? a great one. Yeah. Do you have? Can you pull up what we gave those episodes? Yes, I can pull that up. Okay. Let me, uh, Resurrection Ship was probably season two. It's season two. two, episodes 11 and 12. All right. Let me get it pulled That's up. That's just off the top of my head. I'm not peeking at Rob's page. 
Season two, Resurrection Ship. Okay, so, page so here's what we did. Resurrection Ship, part one. I gave an 8.5. Joe gave an 8.5. Rob gave a 6.5. Part two, I gave, I gave a nine. Rob gave an 8.5. Joe, you gave an 8.5 because you're consistent with your part ones and twos. Thank um, you. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, next. And for those who don't know, we we reviewed Battlestar Battle Galactica. Galactica. On it was show. a show we did before Next Gen. Uh, Bastille Day. Bastille Day was the episode where they go to the prison ship, and that's where we first meet um, Zarek. Zarek for the first time, and uh, mm-hmm. he takes over the ship. Joe, you gave it a nine. Rob, seven. Nick, seven and a half. That was a mm. solid episode, It get, and it was early in the first season, and it sets the tone yeah. for what the show's going to be about. How do we respond in the face of, of annihilation? Uh, it's from Revelation, season four, episode 10, and this is from Collider.com, by the way. Okay, uh, Revelations. I don't really remember that. Was that where they find Earth? I think that's where they find Earth. Yes, that's where they find Earth. Yeah, they discover Earth in the Master Ruins, and it's contain- destroyed. Yep, yep. Uh, Joe gave it a nine five. Nick gave it a nine five. Rob gave it a nine. That was a Ooh, great episode a big- because this was like they were at their lowest point, and they're like, "We found Earth," and then the it's- episode ends with them on a, in a radiated wasteland. Yeah, that was a good episode. That was a good episode. Oh, and we're like. Frick, man, we're, it's over. Kobold's Last Gleaming, part one and two, season one, episode 12 and 13. So that's the season one finale then. Uh, that's when they, the the arrow, right? Isn't that when, when Rosalind gives her the arrow and says, go back and go back to uh, Caprica? There's not really a synopsis on them. Uh, let me, I can look it up real quick. Kobold's Last Gleaming. Um, oh, yeah, they find Kobold. Uh, on Caprica, Hilo. Uh, this is where Hilo finds out that his boomer is not his boomer, but she's a silent. boomer. Uh, and then Starbuck goes to Caprica, has a fight with Six. Do you remember that? And then yes, they all get together. Was Billy alive still? Billy, Billy was still alive. Do I still have that? Oh I hope gosh. you do. Oh my gosh! If we don't, I'm so sad. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Billy was still alive. Um, this is where Adama demands that Rosalind resign, uh, and there's basically the 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 coup was attempting, um, mm-hmm. and then Baltar has his first vision of the Opera House. All right. Okay. Next up is Pegasus, season two, episode. Oh, 10. we know what Pegasus was. That's when they finally reunite for the first time. Yep. And what did we, what did we give that one? Uh, Pegasus. That was season two. two? Ten. That was season two. Yep. Episode ten. Uh, I gave it a ten. Uh, Ooh. Joe gave it a nine five. Rob gave it a nine. Rob, I remember this episode very well because he said the only reason it's a nine is because the music is so terrible for the Pegasus. You hated the music for the Pegasus. Music can take me out of something, man. Mm-hmm. Lay down your burdens, part one and two, season two, episode nineteen and twenty. That is again the finales as well. So that's that's the election. Is that the election? election. That's the election. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, seven. Six and a half, seven and a half. So Nick, seven, Joe, Rob's six and a half, Joe, seven and a half for first episode. Second episode, eight and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. Mm. That was the eight and a half. Occupation, season three, episode oh, one. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we know that one. That's that's the Caprica storyline. We were all nines all the way across the board. Nine? On that one. Nine. That's when they're doing the suicide bombings and they're justifying it. And Hey. Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do, and like, and that's the one where Ty's like, "We are the dogs of hell," <laughs> right? He gives mm-hmm. that fiery speech or something like that. Yeah, Crossroads, season three. See you at the crossroads, <laughs> part one and two, episodes nineteen that, and twenty. That's the final mm-hmm. trial where mm-hmm. where uh, Lee gets up on the stand and he's like, "We're just we're no longer a civilization; we're a gang." And that, yes, like, that we're was... all at guilt. We're all terrible. Was it nineteen and twenty? Uh, yes. Yeah. And then uh, Crossroads Part One, Nick eight, Rob eight and a half, Joe nine. Second part, Nick nine, Rob seven and a half, Joe nine. And this is where it leads with uh, what's his name's uh, acquittal. What they have at number two is 33, season one, episode one. So you guys didn't love that one in hindsight. Uh, uh, let me go back to it. You Okay. I gave it a nine and a half, Rob gave it a seven. Uh, Joe gave it an eight and a half, so I guess you guys did enjoy it. But I remember, like, this is one of the highest rated episodes of the show. And after we were done, your guys are like, "It's okay, but it's not great." Because that was the the pilot episode after the, the after pilot, the mini after movie, the right? Mini series, yes. Okay, yes. 
And then number one, they have Exodus, part one and two. So the finale? Season no, three, see- episodes three and four. Oh, that's when they get back. Uh, they finally have rec- rescued them from Caprica. And he has a terrible mustache. Yeah, he has a really bad hey, mustache. I like the mustache. Oh, Nick gave it 10, a perfect 10. Rob, eight and a half, eight and a half. Joe, nine and a half, nine and a half. Mm. What was it about that? Uh, let me go to Exodus because I think that's there's some big reveals in that one too. Um, Welcome back, old man. I can't say I disagree with this. Big so. fracking deal. What episode was that from? Oh, I, every single episode. Um, oh, yeah, this is where they drop in the Galactica. They do the Galact- the Adama maneuver. Best scene of the, of the show. That was so cool, where they drop the By ship far. in. By yeah. And they're launching the Vipers out the side. and then Also when Callie got killed. <laughs> and also, also when Adama tells his son to get his fat ass out of his office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the part where he kills, uh, Ty kills Ellen, actually. He gives her the drink and kills her. I knew I knew. That's yeah. why. Yeah. 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 So base, Good all, this one is, all this one is is the rescue, basically. They're planning the rescue. They do the rescue. Ooh. Good, good episode. Oh, and then the Galacta is overwhelmed by bombardment. The Pegasus jumps in, takes the fire, and then goes down in a blaze of glory. As the as the resident Battlestar Galactica expert, how do you feel their rankings are? Would you what would you rank as your favorite or what you think is the best episode? I think Exodus was my favorite by far. Exodus Part One and Two, like the rescue from Caprica, was amazing. The way they pulled that off, the tension, especially because this was a show that would kill off characters and would would lead to severe harm to characters. You didn't know what was going to happen. So I really enjoyed uh, that one. I don't think I necessarily disagreed with any of them. Yeah. Um, they were all pretty consistent with some of the R ratings too, actually. So I think it's a solid list. As long as the boxing episode's not on there. Uh, the boxing that. episode was great. It um, was not. It, uh, unfinished business. It was not great. I gave it a four. Joe, you gave it a three rob gave it a two i think that was your lowest rated episode piece for of both of you shat yeah for Nerd. for both of you i do miss saying frack nah, that's true yeah. and i do miss you talking in, in uh ty's voice that <laughs> i miss those days of of, of bsg actually Aww. for those for if those only days. there were a place where you could go back and listen to those episodes i know i mean oh. too bad the anywhere internet. you get your podcast i know uh-huh. wink <laughs> wink wink poke poke uh <laughs> Okay. All right. One other thing you want to talk about before we head over that's, to... That's 30 minutes. Let's go ahead into the episode. All right. Well, let, let us do that. So we have two episodes we're going to review today. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they are Up the Long Ladder and Manhunt. Up the Long Ladder. Enterprise receives a distress call from a human colony. It gets there, um, and they rescue a bunch of basically Irishmen and women... Um, who are living like they're still in the 18th century, right? Or 17th or 16th, whatever. Um, and uh, they have a firecracker of a, a daughter related to the leader uh, who all of a sudden has the hots for Riker and Riker has the hots for her. And they have a little bit of a, 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 a tryst, if you will. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, they find another colony as well that was planted by the same ship all those years ago, and it was called the Mariposa. This colony is full of clones. They just keep cloning each other, and they're super intelligent and smart and full of themselves, but they're but because they've cloned so much, they're degrading. So they want the Star Trek crew to... Uh, the, the Star Trek crew. The Enterprise crew to be their clone DNA people, and the D, they're like, no, you can't have us. But... Here's a bunch of Irish men and women who you could have. And, oh, wait, why don't you all have polyamorous marriages? So there you go. They uh, they settle on that colony, and they're happily ever after. Meanwhile, R- uh, Worf gets the flu and has tea with Dr. Pulaski. This episode stunk. D- do you think it stunk, Snug, yes. though? I, I, just, I didn't appreciate... I didn't like that they... That they... I didn't like that they did they they were with the one colony first and then they completely abandoned it and then they had like almost like a second it was almost like two shorter episodes. There was multiple stories in here, right? You have rescuing of both of the colonies, the but one colony stealing it, the Enterprise which, crew, which is kind of glossed over, right? The, the cloning? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was like it was just like 
yeah, like glossed over, like, oh, we'll add this in there. This is why they we need our help. I thought that was worthy of an, an episode itself. Exactly. Especially like this whole idea of stealing someone else's DNA and the whole argument with Riker where he's like, there's only one William Riker in this world. <laughs> Jokes on him. <laughs> um, but I, but the idea of cloning yourself out of gig, out of existence is interesting. Yes, it yeah, is. Because you just keep degrading over. Yeah. It's like inbreeding, right? It's yeah. the same yeah. idea, genetic inbreeding. Uh, but, so that was just like, I thought that you could expand on that way more. Oh and they just, there's like, so much eh, yeah, there's another colony. What can you do? What are you going to do? It's, it, yeah, there's nothing we can do about it, you know? But let's go back to the cloning, the stealing of the cloning of uh, Riker and Pulaski yeah. for a second. Yeah. They're real quick to grab Pulaski and Riker. But Jordy was down there and they're like, no, let's not clone the black guy. Uh, no. Dude, he, he was blind. That's really what it was. Because they had oh black, that's that's able they had wow. black, I know they had it one was. they had one they're like we got one that we got token we're good With yeah they had the, name, they had like the one South guy Park. yeah yeah they did ignore Jordy didn't they poor they, Jordy if they're really gonna try to repopulate the series the the, the planet they're gonna get after everybody yeah and why would you only take two right? and you Pulaski of all people she's a thousand <laughs> but not her clones her clones would be younger yeah, but immediately they would age fast. Yeah, let's into a thousand years. But old. yeah, have, let's get would. past this guy right here who just walked in. Like, oh wait, there's another guy down here. Let's shh, snag shh, him shh, real quick. Shh, shh, shh. Be cool. He's gone. All right, all right. Take the two white people. Yeah. And this was the one. Mo this was the first time where Jordy says that he can sense humans lying. Right. Yeah, that was that was sometimes. A, he that said was some, new. He did say sometimes, which I did appreciate that little. Piece yeah, but in it there. was like because it'll never be talked about. Because it'll never happen again. Yeah. I thought it was just like it, it restored his vision. But now he's got super like crazy. No, they did the they crazy? did the one episode where it showed it as an infrared type of thing. Yeah, almost like the predator. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, if that's true, if if someone's a really bad liar and their in their their heart rate, like their goes body up, heat or their yeah, heart rate or then, something, yeah, like, then, yeah, then yeah, he could. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to note that now. Yep. It, yeah. And I, maybe these uh these clones never really had to tell a fib before. If he and Troy get together and like they, work together. Yeah, they could, they could form a super shrink, but they would know they would know everything all the time. I know it would be incredible. And Troy is really underutilized. I mean, well, I'll get it, I'll get into that a little bit in the next episode. But as her like her power or her like what she's good at and what she can do, she's very underutilized. Well, yep. yeah, but you're right, especially this episode. Like you're you bring on a civilization that's stuck in the 18th century onto a starship, and she's not there to. Like provide them comfort and counseling, and that. I mean, she moments. did warn them. She did warn uh, Riker. Yeah, like he's hiding something. He's yeah, he was. Yeah, she warned him about With the, 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 the second the clones. The clones. Yeah, yeah, yeah the clone guys. Um, uh, yeah, but you're right. They underutilize her overall because she could be really useful in these situations. Like instead, we're sending Riker and Picard to greet this new civilization. Oh, by the way, Riker's going to just bone this one after they're done meeting. You know, they're consistent with Riker, like, though. So I almost appreciate Almost right away, it. too. Yeah. Like he sees her and he is. The, the Irish woman? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just like, yep. He's like, done. This is happening. Yeah. Like he decided before he even like had a word with her. I know, Picard I like, was like, yeah, go ahead, Riker. You go know, ahead and out. They're like, we're going to leave. And Riker's like. <laughs> I'm gonna stay I'm here. Gonna and stay while he I'm goes. Stay here. <laughs> you go for it, Riker. You, uh, yeah, and then he then he just approaches her, and stands there and basically says, "You're a firecracker." Ooh. But like she was, she was kind of a firecracker and like gave him a little bit of hell. Yeah. But then he kind of diffused it and then just stood there and they looked at each other. Stares and it was like, awkwardly at her. I'll show you my ship if you show me yours. Yeah, pretty much. I think Riker has a foot fetish though. She's like, where can I clean my feet? I will show you. And then he takes her back to her quarters, and she's like, I haven't washed my feet yet. Will you help me? I, that I, is appreciate, not a, that okay. is, I appreciate he was clueless at first, but then he's like, oh, wait. that's But that's so out of character. Tell me, it like, uh, do you like women? Like that's She's a, like, are you, do you, do you like do you, girls? Do you not see what I'm wearing? Are you gay? Yeah, <laughs> right? And then she just takes off her clothes, and he's like, "Although, in the interest of diplomacy, I got to do what I got to do. Maybe he has the reverse foot fetish and she's like, yeah, my feet are dirty and I have not cleaned my feet in ages. And he's like, yeah, like, you, I'm, I'm good. I don't need it. There's <laughs> literally no, mold and mildew and bacteria <laughs> on these feet. Like 
These are those foot videos that you see on TikTok. And they don't wear socks. Them. They have open-toed shoes, I so they're know. just their they're, fossilized feet. I know. It's just and, and Riker's down for it. Yeah. He is down. DTF, oh. down the foot. <laughs> down the foot. Yeah, exactly. So the, he's, really, he's all about the foot clan. But I'd like I like Ooh. I like that we're back to horny Riker though. Yeah. 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 In the interest of diplomacy, though. Yes. In the interest of diplomacy. Diplomacy. He wanted yeah. to diplom Hersey. So okay. So going back to all these multiple stories, though, you have this going on with Riker with this woman. You have the other the the other colonies. You have stealing of clones. Then you have uh and like um like the conversation about one society feeling like they're superior to the other society. Like there is a lot thrown into this episode. That's not really What's the fully purpose developed. of the episode to, to show that there's the carnal and the cerebral side is, is needed. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like, yeah. Like, yeah, like, like you have the, you, you, the carnal side is going to be there, but you, you also need the cerebral side and you can't have them separated. They got to be used together. I don't, it just, it was weird, right? It was because weird. They're, they're in one society. They're like, we're intelligent and we're smart. And it's because we, and don't, we don't want to bang. Cause sex. it's gross. Yeah. And the other society oh is God. like, how can you, you can't be that smart then. And the other societies we're passionate, we're fiery and we're a little backwards, but at least we have sex. And it's like, yeah, I, it's at least we weird, drink. It, yeah, it's a weird combo. I did it's got enjoy no bite. The, I did enjoy that scene where he yeah. where he drinks the Cleon blood wine, and then he's whatever. completely <laughs> he's whipped. just gone. He's d- demolished by that point. I like the woman giving it to uh, giving it to Worf as well, uh, like basically calling him a loser in front of everyone, and he just walks away from her at one point as well. That's what you got to do. Yeah, that's what you got to do. When women start yelling at did you, he, you just walk away. Wasn't this the episode where he's like, "Yeah, she's fiery. She's yes. gonna be a Klingon woman." Yes. Yeah, she's like, she's like a Klingon woman. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Which he can't handle, and obviously. He, and he's like, if "Riker wasn't in there already. I'd be tapping in." Yeah. Uh, so, looking at some commentary, uh, the person who wrote this, Melinda Snodgrass, Melinda Snodgrass, uh, said that this was intended to be a commentary about immigration because she hated the xenophobic attitude she was seeing. The whole "we don't want them because they're the wrong color, don't speak the language, or don't have the right religion." I didn't get that at all. I didn't get that at all, at except all. for the part where they didn't take Jordy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't really get that either. No, uh, wh- I mean they, he, that's what they said this is about. Yeah, and she wrote this episode, or yeah. she was on the she writing wrote this team. Episode. Or? She she wrote this episode, and that's what she said it's about. She I did failed. not get. Th- yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I that sounds like um, that sounds like posturing to me. Like I, there's no like th- trying to make this episode seem a bit more, uh, a bit deeper than it actually was. Mm-hmm. To I me, get that. To me, if you're if you're gonna go with writers, to me this sounds like, all right, we've got a couple things on the board that we can do, and they're like, ah, just put them all in here. Because it, you could really flesh out both a and both sides of this into in, into episodes. Yeah, yeah. Like you could have fleshed out the the Irish folks. Yeah. Into an episode, if you had a, a rather meaty B plot to sort of maybe not as a maybe not like a solid A, but like an an A and B where they almost share enough. They like share the same amount of screen time. Yeah. But well, the B plot here, you that could be its own episode without a real B plot. Right. Well, and you know, one of the things that, you know, I noticed from this episode is if, if you're really going for that angle of one society thinks it's better than the other, right? And they focus so much on the clones thinking they were better than the other one. Uh, Picard was like that when he saw them. He's like, what are they doing to my ship? What are these people? Blah, blah, blah. Like kind of mocking them and making fun of I them. He's more worried about his ship. I know, but they're still looking what, down on them. Have you ever seen the Enterprise dirty? I know, but they're still looking at these You're people right. going, they're inferior than us. Right? Oh, yeah, he did. And then, so to me, an almost more interesting argument would be like, they're like, they're looking at these people feeling like they're inferior, and then they meet this other civilization that feels like they're superior, and then it puts up a lens to them being like, hey, we're kind of assholes that's to them too. For sure. Uh, but instead, it's, it's like, no, they're still the sanctimonious ones. And I think that's one thing that always bugs me with, early next generation especially they're always so sanctimonious and I like did we're appreciate so much better than everyone in the cargo hold where picard starts laughing because of the absurdity of it all you sometimes you just have to laugh at, laugh at the absurdity yeah yeah i think that was a good moment it was a good moment and there, yeah go ahead joe i'm why i'm blanking on 
the like the constitution that they use what is it the prime directive the prime directive okay doesn't this sort of go against the prime directive if they're aiding a, a if they're aiding the the second colony into furthering their species uh, hmm? species yeah like they're aiding they're they're providing them assistance or a way to they're helping them were they along warp faring because they got that out that far. I don't remember what they said. They got out the four, far colonization. It was, a, it was like 200 years prior. It was a freighter that went out. Uh, like how far speed. was that beacon? That beacon was. And it was like, a while. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. So is that is that the loophole that they're not warp faring? Or that they were maybe at one point <laughs> at least. Maybe that's their loophole. Yeah. I was like, because I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Oh, I don't. I don't remember, so I can't speak to it. Okay. So going back to that snod, you know, the Melinda Snodgrass who wrote this, she admits that she that lied re- in your previous quote that rewrites and budget re- restrictions resulted in the intended commentary being lost in this episode. Okay. And I can buy that. I can buy it. Uh, I don't. <laughs> that sounds like revisionist history to me. Okay. Like it sounds like she tried to write an episode. Mm-hmm. That she wanted to say something, it failed, and she's like, "Well, I mean, it would have worked if it wasn't for the budget." What? What budget? Although, what, what? Although, what? Although the uh, Roddenberry's lawyer is notorious for rewriting scripts. Yeah, during these first two seasons. But what about this episode? Said this is they cut the budget on this episode. Nothing. There, yeah, nothing stood out as being needed for budgetary purposes. Yeah. Right? it was. Damn near a bottle show. Uh, it's a damn near. I didn't say it was. Yeah. Because they still had the sets on the planet and so on. Transporter effects. Yeah. Logistics question. Did they just keep beaming all of, like the Irish people's crap on? Did O'Brien just keep beaming all that shit onto them? Oh, yeah. Here's some hay. We're going to beam that yeah. up. He, he, well, they, they had, had those, to have like, for those, the animals. Like, what were those big cheese wheels or whatever those things were? Well, they, those... want, they wanted their equipment. I don't know. Did they just beam their whole O'Brien, civilization O'Brien up? probably spent... The better part of a week just beaming their shit onto mm-hmm. the. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like, really got to use this transporter. Here's an empty bottle of Jameson. I have to beam up. Oh, it's full. I no, no. Isn't but... O'Brien Scottish or is he Irish? He's Irish. He's Irish, man. Oh, that's probably why I did it. He's probably yeah. He's like my people. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's a trip. But and so then you have, uh, Wharf story, which doesn't do anything. Well, it starts in the end. So I think it was filler. Yeah, we don't win filler, yeah. But the problem is, Those Leons don't where, faint. A wharf has AIDS. Yeah, it, well, it, it lasted like eight seconds. It did. The problem is, is that if they would have focused on what you were talking about earlier, the fascination that the population was dying out because of over cloning, this wouldn't have had been that. This wouldn't have been needed for filler because mm-hmm. that's what it was. It was filler. It didn't fill that much though. That's, it yeah. filled like th- like literally like three minutes of time. Yeah, the tea thing was nice and cute, I guess. But other than that. It, I mean, he fainted, yeah. and then they had tea, and then they just abandoned that completely, pretty yep. much. Mm-hmm. And then he was fine. Literally, it was like three minutes. Not like, yeah, it wasn't much. No, it wasn't much. It was a distraction where they could have executed other parts of the uh, of the plot better. Yeah, I, I would. I would have given that more to the, the A or B plot instead of oh, Warp has or Warp has AIDS, and we cured it. AIDS. Everyone drink this, has AIDS. Drink this tea. I don't know. I it's it's a weird episode in the sense that, like you said, there's a lot of potential meat here, but none of it's really picked off the bone. It's just yeah. Really I, I like I classify this episode as it was trash, but it was also entertaining trash at points. It was. I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought there were I thought there were some good moments and some things where you're like, oh, I'd like to see more than more of that, and then it was like, well, yeah, I'd like to see more of the daughter. She was. <laughs> I like she was like you got to start from the top down. You end at my absolutely horrific feet. <laughs> yeah, she was because they stink. She was not one to mince her words. No, like no, she no, let no. him know exactly what she wanted, didn't she? And but yeah. Riker, to Jonathan Frakes' credit, he has a great little grin. He does. He does, he uses, yeah, he he does, does not hide the next it. Like, no, he has a good facial expressions he yeah. could put on, like a uh, like a maniacal. Yeah, like maniacal. He's she's like from top down. He's like. 
I got you. I'm, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. And hopefully you're putting down them clothes. <laughs> and she, she did. did. Yeah. He and didn't she was ask. like, hock to a... Oh, my oh God. Oh, my gosh. We almost made it the whole oh, episode. I'm, there have been multiple times where I was uh, going to make reference to that. And I'm like, no, Nick. Mature. I <laughs> about, you know what? Thank you. And, and, Rob, and Kelly, Rob. And Rob comes through. <sighs> and that would have been better served in the next episode, frankly. Well, I don't know. In that minute, in that moment, who knows know. what happened there? I don't know. No, no. But the, da- the daughter was a bit primitive, so... Yes, true. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Anything else? They didn't come from the the dry Irish country land. You got it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, that was for you, Nick. By the way, uh, I'm sure uh, it was. Almost made it the whole episode with that. I know. I was really doing my best not to bring up any references, but you did it. Uh, anything else uh, for this episode stand out? No. No. no? Not really. Okay. I don't. I don't. You don't want to talk so. about this idea of what cloning means and like. Oh, yeah, this, I, the, I mean, yeah, but I would. I want to do that for the whole episode. I don't want to talk about Worf having briefly have a, a real short bout of AIDS. Yeah, yeah. And then, it was the flu, but yeah, <laughs> it was measles. Oh yeah, it was measles. It was measles. I'm sorry. Yes. A ch- it's a ch- it's a child's disease. It's a. Chi- I mean, there is a deeper question, but I mean, they didn't dedicate a lot of time to it either. No, no, no they didn't. Which. <laughs> It just to me that's the I don't know that's like the one thing about this show is it doesn't it touches on things where you're like okay this is a good this is something that's a bit philosophical and then they they just kind of toss it to the side or they don't they don't finish the job yet right they're mm-hmm. getting there mm-hmm. but they're just not following through enough for me so if you're on the enterprise and they're like hey we need your DNA to to basically continue our, our populous would you give it up no yeah yeah i mean yeah. No. no no the idea of cloning is just weird and icky to me in the first place i didn't really understand how i didn't like the explanation of like they've cloned they're cloning themselves out of existence because that from what we know of cloning it's not going to happen have you ever made photocopies of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy they get yeah, shitty. slowly degrade they get they get shitty you lose stuff yeah but time. you're using a photocopier like yeah, but I'm it, talking the what was this the 24th century? Yeah, the cloning the cloning should be I like absolutely identical. Well, even if it's identical, you I think you would still have 99 percent as opposed to you have some or degradation. 98 percent versus 100, and over time that would result down to your 70s where you're going to get a little derpy of a uh, of a clone. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. So <laughs> so their their solution is to give them. Pulaski. Der- Pulaski and and a whole derpy society and horny, of, and high, horny you know, Riker. Riker to yeah. be fair, Riker could be very beneficial for that society. Yes, he could. Wait, if they, wait, three children they, and three wives for each wife. I'm in. Well, the the fact that they didn't wait, like to have kids, sex though. Why would you pick Riker? Yeah, I don't. I don't. So then, well, they didn't. They, there? they well, didn't know that though. They didn't well, know he was so a horn dog. The question becomes: What if you clone Riker, and then he wants to have sex with? Because he doesn't know that their society doesn't enjoy he sex. He will they know because he'll grow up in that society. Yeah, he'll, they'll throw him in jail. Yeah. He's not going to be cloned not. at that age, I don't think, is he? Or do, are they cloned at that exact age? It looks age? like all of them look the same age. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, because they went into the, the cloning uh, room. Yeah. And they weren't, the bodies weren't fully developed, but they, were, they looked like adults. Yeah. So they were cloning adults. They're cloning to, to the age. So then. Which is kind so, of dumb. But then you're cloning him exactly, and so he's not growing up in the society. He's he's going to be an exact replica of William Riker, who will, who but will. But he won't have the memories at that moment. I don't think. But he he will have the instinct, the sexual instinct, possibly. Well, so if you if it doesn't have the memories, and the, and you clone this person from scratch, wh- how long does it take to educate them to get them up? to I speed? know that feels like it'd be more work than them just having yeah sex. It, it just seems like they would they would clone to date where they where they where they are i don't know or how. or or clone hotter women <laughs> and then you won't find the re, the sex repulsive i like when they walked in and Riker was like triplets yeah i know yeah right away Qua- <laughs> and it's like quadruplets Riker's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i like my chances i've yeah. seen this video in the holodeck <laughs> gosh oh my gosh yeah uh, gosh, there was something else that I was going to bring up about this episode, and I lost it because of you guys. But I felt no. like it was a really good. We thing. were asking good questions. No, you, good questions. you I except mean, in the in the in the 
between, context of absurdity is yes. Uh, in between absurdities, thank you. In between it, you're correct. You're correct. There are good questions in there. There are yeah. good questions in there. Oh, no, this is what I was going to talk about. At the very end of the episode, the solution is, hey, look, all the women have to have three husbands and have as many babies as possible. And and the one woman's like, oh, so a like, bunch of yeah. men deciding for all of us. And then she thinks about it for a second. She's like, I can get used to this idea. Ah, uh, yes. I don't. You know what though? That still sucks for the women. That's a lot of work. Popping out a lot of babies, and that's not cool. <laughs> but she, here's the game, though. She knew she wasn't fertile. No problem. Yeah, she's just having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> she's just having a great time. Manhunt. Manhunt, please. Manhunt. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, the Enterprise picks up two ambassadors, Antietam ambassadors, who are in a catatonic state. So they basically just stand there and are statues. Um, while they're standing there being statues, Lexvana Choi joins the ship with her manservant, Mr. Ham, um, and decides that she is ready to settle down with one man, and her one man in her sight is Picard. So she tries to work Picard over. It doesn't work. Then she moves on to uh, Riker. It doesn't work. None of those work. Um, and she basically is like... Uh, uh, basically crazy i don't know basically um uh she falls in love with a she's dick drunk she yeah she falls in love with a character on the holodeck and then she realizes she's not real and then when the ship arrives to the conference she basically tells the crew hey by the way these people who are here are assassins and she's right they were assassins uh, and she's like hey i didn't find a new husband but uh she says uh at least she saved the conference and then she uh, teases picard for having nasty thoughts this is worse than the first episode. It's kind of a fun episode, though. Like Riker or Picard in the dinner scene was fantastic. You call him, call him yeah. get in for support. He's like, <laughs> what, what's a serious <laughs> downer here? Oh we'll get Data in here to ramble. I thought that was good. That was great. Old, he's like, fascinating, Mr. Mr. Data. Mr. Data. Fascinating. Good. Absolutely fascinating. He's I like, know. I owe you one for that. Yeah. You have no you idea. You have no idea, yeah. So... That line, you have no idea. Did you, did you take it as like he saved him from her or saved him from himself? Like no, like her. he saved him from her. From he, her. He's not interested in her. You but think like, he's interested in her? No, like saved him from himself from succumbing to her advances. Like No, that's what we're saying, her. That's what we're saying. There's no chance. There's no chance. Okay. But he doesn't want to be a prick as the captain and have to actually do that, right? He's trying Pussy. to do it. Just do it. He's just trying to he's trying to be diplomatic. Plus, it's one of his his bridge crew's moms. That's why you just got to do it sometimes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some, um, you got to do what you got to do. And sometimes it's sorry, Deanna. Sometimes it's someone's mom. It's, she's like, is Riker still yours? Mother. <laughs> it's yes, crazy. I got dibs. I thought, she, okay, so, th like, is he still yours? And she said, like, we don't we do not do that anymore. That's yeah. not, like... And then later in the episode, when after, basically, Picard had, like, tossed her aside, like, said no, and she was kind of eyeing uh, Riker, and they were, like, they were, like, yeah. talking to each other through their minds, I thought... She was gonna say like because he's mine. I thought like Deanna was gonna say like oh because like bring it back. Yeah, I claimed him. He's yeah, mine. he's mine. Yeah. More dibs than anything. There is a little bit of dibs on there. Uh, favorite exchange though was uh, when Riker Picard, yes. and Troy are talking, uh, and I got the quote here. Yeah, uh, and it's like yes, it's something Troy warned me about when we first started to see each other. A beta zone woman when she goes through this phase quadruples her sex drive or, or more. more or more. You never told me that. And then I didn't want to frighten the, you, and he's got the most... The biggest Cheshire cat uh, grin you've ever seen. He's like, I wasn't frightened. Again, excellent, excellent by Jonathan Frakes. Oh, my gosh. Like, and that's so Riker, too, where he's like, and more? Uh-huh. Yeah. When we first started to see each other, a Betazoid woman, when she goes through this phase, quadruples her sex drive. Or more. Or more. You never told me that. I didn't want to frighten you. She has opted for the only dignified option open to her. Isolation. 
she has decided to focus all her sexual energy on one male who will, of course, eventually become her husband. It seems, Captain, that you are the early favorite. And okay, just the shit eating sir. grin he oh had. Oh my was god, it just priceless. Like the Cheshire cat, just it yeah. just big, big, big grin. And he okay, and Picard's like focus, Riker, focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I, the episode is fun, but it just the like the con like the content is just. It, it means it I, means I, I no, absolutely it's nothing. It's meant to be a filler episode. Yeah. I find but it was fun. so annoying. I, this episode doesn't say I'm like, anything. I do too. The what to be annoying? I find Luxana so annoying. Whether it's DS Nine or this, she's exhausting. But I think she serves her character well. She's then. supposed to be exhausting. I get. Yeah, it. Michelle Bear, uh, Roddenberry plays this character amazing. Yeah, she does a really good job because I can't stand her when she's on the screen. And if you thought Worf having AIDS the previous episode was a useless plot point, we have these two. Fishmen. One was a Mick Fleetwood by Mick Fleetwood, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, frozen and then just waiting the whole episode and then waiting to kill. Stasis, yeah. So I actually kind of appreciate the simple solution at the end. Like they're just trying to blow the whole thing up. I really kind of appreciate that quick reveal, quick solution because it was it, it <laughs> was ends. funny. It was funny and what she was just like here they're just trying to kill us all anyway, and I just. The way it was that part was executed made me laugh. I don't disagree. I I kind of I kind of enjoyed it. I thought it, it was that. so. It's just like why why have this in the episode? It made no sense. But it worked because they really were in the background the entire time and weren't a focus for it. And it was a it was a it wasn't even a B plot. That was like a D plot because of just they were there and 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 just for the ending. And I, yeah. And, and, like, and for and for Wesley to be like completely racist. Oh, yeah. yeah, which yeah. which check? I mean, so this he's is the been second time in, in second in four episodes he's been like, "Oh, they're ugly," and and, uh, kinda, and he mistook the one guy for another guy. Yeah, right. So is he, he is it? Do he and uh, O'Brien hang he, out? I was gonna I was gonna say he spends too much time with O'Brien. Yeah. O'Brien's like, look at these fucking guys. On the other hand, Worf, what a handsome race. Mm -hmm. Worf was like, I can't wait for them to get out of stasis. So. I actually like them being in stasis like that the whole time because, again, this is another case where the crew is kind of making fun of them and, like, diminishing them and ignoring them. And then you have Luxana Troy comes in here, and they're all like, oh, we can't stand this woman. She's insufferable. She's good for nothing. Yeah. And then she's all like, true. Uh, BT dubs, folks. That's Mike an assassin. Drop. And then just watch. Tra transporters like, won't pick it up. It's basically a reminder that, like, hey, look, you can diminish me all you want, but. I got solutions for yeah, you. I just saved a whole I conference. I just saved a conference, right? I appreciate that. Sometimes they're too big for their britches because and they're so uptight. They got sticks up their asses, all of them. And Luxana comes and says, I'll pull it out and put it back in for you if you'd like over and over again. That's what she said. You know? What What was? What did they have? Utrithium or something? Ultrithium? Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it was. I like how she reveals it. And then it takes data all of... Three seconds to to just check the computer. Oh yeah, be like, she's oh, right. Yeah, she's right. She's Wouldn't you something. have done that from the beginning, you moron? Well, if you, you know what you're you looking for, it's so. easier to find what you're looking for. Come on. I'm just saying. Let's. I mean, if you're if your your things don't pick it up for some reason because there's you'd such a small so. amount, you'd think so. Yeah. Mm. 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 I think this was just a, a way for Mick Fleetwood to get on Star Trek. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know they are notorious so far in the show for uh, having people on and no one knows they're there. Mm -hmm. Which is really well. Like done. the guy that did Cobra. We didn't mention this last week. The guy that did Cobra Commander's voice and Star Screen's Star Screen's voice was a Packlid last week. That's how bad the Packlids were. No, we botched that Packlid. We make it go Cobra. <laughs> how did they not drop that once? They didn't. No, they didn't. Gentlemen, here's the thing: we're nearing the end of season two. We only have three episodes left. That's there's it? no more. To, there's no more to talk about in this episode. I mean, is there? I thought it was hilarious. I I thought the the part where they kept bringing guys on to kill um, oh, Picard Dixon and Hill. yeah, uh, yeah, the Dixon Hill thing, yeah. and Robert O'Reilly, Galron was Galron in it. was in it as a Scarface. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, no, 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 computer reset. Yeah, and the, and then the computer's like, dude, you're wanting me to make it less violent, but if I'm pulling from these novels, there's no way to make it less yeah. violent. Like this is all I got for you. I get it. Yep, I get it. Poor Picard. I think Riker's excited about his future. <laughs> yes. He's like, I'm definitely st sticking this out till 
midlife. It's going to happen sooner or later, right? I feel so... Well, that's a spoiler for the end of the series, so never mind. Dang it. I want to talk about that, but Joe hasn't seen any of it. I know. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just so sorry. Sorry. Uh, this is We're nearing our last episodes of the uh, 80s, though. Oh, no. I lied. Never mind. It's not until halfway through season three that we're in the 90s. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first 1990 episode was The Defector. Oh, that's a good one. What's the date? Air date? One one ninety. Really? Yeah. Syndication? Wow, kick yeah. off the year. Yeah. Right? On a network, they would have never done that. No. There's no, no way. There's no way. Mm-mm. Back yeah. then, especially. No. 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 Uh, anything else for Manhunt, then? No. I got I got nothing, man. No, it, I, I got, mean... I got nothing. It, there was, I, it, was, I there was, it was a... Com- it had comedic value... Yeah, it just didn't have any substance. Like I said, I, I may not like the character, but Major Rod, Major Barrett Roddenberry does kill some of the lines. Like at the end, it's like they, they, you, your transports can't detect it anyway. She does deliver the lines hate, very well. I hate that she teases Picard like that about like his thoughts. It's like shut up, he's not thinking that. And there's no way. If he was, he would have bagged you at dinner. Yes, that's true. <sighs> I don't know. She is showing off. She's flaunting her body to him a lot. I like the. I like. Uh, was it Picard that called her uh, called Troy's mom out to Troy with like for being a for being an empath? Her her oh, yeah. uh, accuracy leaves a lot to be desired. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much being like your mom sucks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not saying any of that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking any of that shit. There's a throwaway line in there. That Troy says that during this phase in life, it, it's off. Yeah, but I yeah. really think that Luxana's. Like, just taunting the hell out of Picard. Yeah, she's used. She knows he's not thinking. Even yet, to the last, but she's insinuating beam out. Yeah, as she's like fading, she's like Picard. You you shouldn't think such nasty thoughts Na- or whatever. Na- naughty thoughts yeah. or whatever. Um, uh, we didn't even talk about the part where uh, Riker goes to pick up the suitcase. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's struggling to pick it up. Well, that was oh, that was, allow me this pleasure. Yeah, exactly. damn it. <laughs> Bad decision, bad decision. I like Lurch. I like the guy. You like Lurch? Strong. Yeah. He's yeah. cool. He bangs that I li- gong. I like when he just sucked down the Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. And Picard brings it. Yeah. And he's just all in once. Mm-hmm. And he just, Picard just stands there looking in awe like, what the f- That's That was supposed cool. to be for dinner. Yep. This man's awesome. What are we going to do now? This man's amazing. Yeah, I should party with him. We've too bad the Irish guys weren't still on the ship. They could have had drinking contest. They could have. I know. They could have. It would have been great. Wood looks on a- I've tried to hook up with one of the Irishmen. Yes. No. No. No, they would be too backwards for her. Yeah, because yeah. even the, even she was mortified she would, by the fish people. Yeah. She yeah. She she wouldn't. She liked the bot she liked the is the, it the clone Rex? people, maybe. Is that the guy who is it are we led to believe Rex's bar? Oh yeah. Are we led oh, to believe yeah. that the bartender, the barkeep is Rex, or did they yeah. say his name? I don't remember. I, was, I don't think they ever said his name. But she she immediately took took to him. And Picard was like, I got some news for you. He's not real. He is not real. You think she would know that because she can't read his thoughts. Or she was so pleased she couldn't read someone's thoughts she didn't Mm. care. She was she was so turned on by the fact that he was I find it somewhat erotic. (laughs) Able to hide his thoughts. Like he's a man who buries his his thoughts. Uh, This man is traumatized. (laughs) I want I want him. I can fix him. (laughs) <laughs> I can fix him. That's what she was thinking the whole time. Uh, review time? Let's do it. All right. Up the long ladder. One. one. <laughs> I think I'm somewhere around a five for this one. I, I, uh, four. Okay. I'm going to go right in the middle. 4.5. This 4. is a miss. This is missed potential right like here. Like I said, it's trash, but I was entertained by it still, but I, I can't give it a five because five is, I can't give it a five. Five is, it. it was yeah. below average. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Very, uh, that's what I would, that's like my takeaway from this is missed potential. Okay. Okay. I get you. Uh, the next episode. Missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. The next episode, Manhunt, I'm actually going to give a five just for the comedic scenes alone. The com- yeah, because I'm going to keep it at four because I, I did find some things funny and. Uh-huh. I'll give it a 5.5. Really? You like this episode? After all that? Yeah. More than the last one, huh? Oh, the first one was terrible. Like, I, the first one disappointed me so much because there was so much potential in and each storyline. And they, it just and felt like... You're very right. Yeah, you're very right. Really and then the right... I, I was kind of turned off by what the writer said. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, 
I because I didn't get any. Not like, a, I not didn't a get touch a, that. Not even a touch. Now, if if there were budget, if there were budget cuts or whatever, and you couldn't make you couldn't make the story the way that you wanted, if if that were the case, there would still be some sort of remnant of the ideas that you're trying to get across. I got none of that. Okay. The, the, the immigration, I got I got no, not even a hint of it. I could see how it could have been in there. Yeah, but I didn't really maybe, get it either. If if you really want to stretch it and make it like a thin, like a straw man argument for the one scene where they were all three, like the fe, uh, Picard, and then the, oh, the, where the they two were colonies were at, were negotiating at yeah. the table, maybe that. But, but even then, but even right, then, it wasn't. It's a stretch. It's a very much a stretch. So yeah, I'd, stretch. Yeah, I'm with you. I get you. Sounds like a scorned writer to me. I'm with you. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, we did it. We reviewed two more episodes of Star Trek. We only, we only got three left in season two. Only three left. And then we're on to season three. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I won't. I can't recall if season three gets better right away. I can't recall that. It better. I don't remember. Quitting. But, uh, the uniforms do. Ooh. The, hey, spoiler. I do like the uniforms better in season three. So thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's been a... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that, man. Yeah. Don't really care. If Don't you were, really care. If you were here, you were here. If you weren't, you weren't. <laughs> if, you're, you, if, you're, if you weren't, you won't even. You won't yeah, even know. If you if you weren't, no, we're used to that. Yeah. And if you're deaf, wouldn't hear it anyway. <laughs> it's been great keeping up with you. I think so, Joe. Maybe not. That's fine. What about you, Rob? I love people who listen to us. All right. Thanks all. We love you. Like, follow, subscribe. We love you. Video exclusive package media. Yes. Physical media. Do it. Love it. Bye.